Today we're looking at two of the most hotly debated topics in the canine world, cropping ears and docking tails. Stick around and we'll find out how common the practices are for the Doberman today and what the procedural functions were in the original working roles. Welcome back to the Fenrir Doberman Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Doberman, then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise the perfect Doberman. So if you're a lifelong lover, thinking about getting one, or just started your journey with your new Doberman, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Doberman upload. So let's dive into today's video and we'll go over everything you need to know about cropping and docking when it comes to the Doberman. First off, I want to say that cropping and docking are controversial procedures that typically only apply to working canines. Both procedures are generally banned practices in the UK in most situations but are still common in other countries. The goal of this video isn't to condone or condemn the practices, just to give you an idea of the reason why owners of this breed may have the procedures done. Historically, cropping ears and docking tails were done for canines who would otherwise have their ears or tails injured during the course of their daily work. Some people believe that cropping ears improves the dog's hearing and helps to prevent infections. Terriers, for example, had their ears cropped to prevent injury from bites as they cornered rats and other vermin. Great Danes were both cropped and docked in their ancestral boar hunting days to prevent their ears from being injured and their tails docked to keep them from breaking as they crashed through the brush after their quarry. Herding canines that worked around heavy livestock like cattle or horses had their tails docked to prevent the animals from stepping on them, which would have caused intense pain and potentially gotten the canine killed. Burrowing terriers had their tails docked to allow their owners to pull them out of holes without breaking the thinner half of their tails in the process. The safety of working today's canines is one of the few exceptions to the ban of cropping and docking in the UK, and it's still only done when specific conditions are met. Today, many canines don't fill the same roles as they used to, so cropping and docking in those cases are for competition breed standards or appearances. There's a strong trend towards leaving the natural features of a canine unaltered through cropping and docking if they aren't a true working canine. That being said, you'll still find many breeds cropped and docked in the US and other nations that don't have an outright ban on the procedures for non-working canines. Hey guys, really quick message. I just wanted to let you know, if you're not following us on Instagram already, we are doing tons of helpful, valuable content over there that I'm sure you'll love. We've got a couple of different pages that I think you'll really enjoy. First is our Fenrir business account, where we do loads of stuff about training, some of our product services, and just what we get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, building the fast this growing canine company in the world and maybe you'll be interested in checking out my personal instagram that's at i am will afferton again if you're interested there'll be links in the description sorry for interrupting the video i'll let you get straight back to it dobermans are incredibly popular around the world especially across europe and the us for their loving nature and supreme guarding instincts the american kennel club breed standards state they should have cropped ears and docked tails but this of course only applies to competition canines Dobermans in the US are frequently cropped and docked to appear more intimidating. Though their generally unimpressed facial expression really makes them appear quite fierce, even when their ears and tails are left natural. Ear cropping is rarely necessary in our modern world, even for working canines. There are several breeds that have naturally erect ears like the German Shepherd. And if that alert appearance is important to you, consider breeds that already have standing ears. Cropping is typically only seen on guardian type breeds today since it's now a cosmetic procedure that's slowly but surely falling out of fashion. It's a hotly debated topic on breed specific forums since many argue that it doesn't affect the general health and happiness of the canine and they're able to go about their life normally after they've healed. Some canines have tails that are quite strong along the whole length like the Labrador Retriever and are left unaltered because they aren't at risk of being stepped on or injured as they run through the fields and brush. Others, like the Cocker Spaniel, has a weaker tail with long fine hair that's easily caught on branches or injured if they wag their tail too close to a solid surface. Australian Shepherds once had their tails docked since they worked with heavy livestock, but they've been selectively bred to frequently be born with bob tails now which are naturally docked. Similar breeds like Border Collies who have worked with lighter livestock like sheep don't need to worry about their long tails near as much as the breed was rarely altered. Today, cropping and docking are mostly done to keep the historical appearance of the canine for breed competition or for looks. True working canines do benefit from having the procedures done, but they're also being bred to have standing ears and short tails occur naturally. 
On canines like the Connie Corso, Great Dane and Doberman, they have a more fierce and alert appearance when cropped and docked, but it's no longer needed for their safety in modern roles. There's nothing wrong with leaving them with floppy ears and long tails, and it doesn't negatively impact their ability to love and protect your family. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Doberman videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.